Well, I'm ready to roll. Okay, well, let's hear it, my guy. Good. Let's get this done, baby. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Baker Spectre. To my left is Jenna Nicole Baker. To her right, Megan Allen. That's my left, but that's fine. These were all lefts. Left. You've had it right you, the first Yeah, time. you should have yeah. stuck with that left. My bad. That's okay. And also to my right, <laughs> the sassy Katie Marley Calvary Baker. Miss Baker. Miss Baker, whatever. <laughs> he said my name was such hate. Oh, well, you were being sassy to him just a few minutes ago, and that he is clearly true. is remembering that. That is true. That is true. Anyway, before we have to... um. Our first topic. Is Katie's he ambushing me with a topic that I don't know about? <laughs> I think he's... Tease your topic. Jenna, you, you want to go first? What's, what's going on? Yeah, well, first I want to say welcome to Megan. Hi, guys. I'm really excited to be here. Megan is our cousin. We grew up yep. living next door to her, and we're super excited to have you here. Oh, my gosh. Stop. <laughs> ah! so exciting. <laughs> Bestie. <laughs> oh, okay. So here's my first question. This weekend, I need all of your opinions on it. This weekend, as in August 26th, I put up my Halloween decoration. I supported it. I told her to do it. Everybody's in that mindset. Well, we it's are in. <laughs> we <laughs> all. Nobody's talking to you, Siri. Shh. Sorry, my Apple Watch is trying to be a part of the conversation. Um, <laughs> Producer Ellis is giving me funny faces over there in the corner. Like, he does not approve. He said... That's why he's not on camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, You're it's spooky season. <laughs> She's just trying to like manifest cooler weather, man. Mm-hmm. Oh my well, gosh, I, wish. I did saw I wish. a Snapchat. You, you're going to going to pull up your Halloween decorations. I'm not going to. I did. I think he's saying he saw your Snapchat of mm-hmm. your Halloween decorations. Did you like them? I do. Here's my thought process. Okay. At the beginning of September, I have a lot of I things think going on. You are ready for the spooky season, <laughs> and that's awesome. Congratulations! Thank you. At the beginning of September, I have a okay. lot of stuff going on, yeah. and truthfully, I want every ounce of September to be filled with my Halloween decor because the second it is November first. I got to take down some of the skeletons and the jack-o'-lanterns and I got to put up just the regular pumpkins for Thanksgiving. And then that goes really quick. And then boom, Christmas. So I am officially a Halloween girl. Like Chris has converted me. We went to Halloween horror nights last year and I am in. I was never that big of a Halloween fan until Chris converted me, but I am in, <laughs> I am dedicated and I I'm a Halloween girly and I wanted my decor up for the entirety of September. And in order to do that, I had to put it up the last available weekend I had in August. You know what? There you go. I'd agree with that term. You're just saying you are obsessed with, with Halloween. It, and that's just you. Okay? And that, that's just you put up Halloween deco- decorations. For me, I watch Disney Channel. We all know that. I watch every single spooky shows like Jesse, like Sweet Life of Zack so and Cody. Spooky. Every single one. Like their Halloween episode. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dude, the Zack and Cody. Ha- oh, my God. The Esteban, Zack oh, and Cody yeah. episode. That's one Sick. of the top. It's a great episode. That's Even I remember top. it. And that's good. That's good. Because. One of my favorites were um, Jesse is gonna gonna be um, when Luke and Emma got got possessed, possessed. by keeper and a door keeper to uh, a lock. Some Christian in the automation door lock. Okay, we're gonna move on from that. What R.I.P. Can I, I have something to say? I would love to hear. I it. made you something. Oh, <gasps> I love some things. It's next door, but it wasn't ready for me to bring over. Oh, but do you want me to tell you what it is? Yeah, tell us. So, you know those skeletons and the candles taking a bath? What? What? No. It's like I made this skeleton. I got it from Dollar Tree. And I hot glued it to there. And then I filled it into like this cauldron. So it looks like it's taking a bath. And it's a, it's a it's candle. A candle. <gasps> oh, my incredible. God. That's awesome. I love you. I hope that I have a picture of it. Do you want to see? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then... This could be interesting. Wait, Megan, I'll show you that. 
So I think the over overwhelming um, consensus here is that it was okay for me to put up my Halloween decor. Oh, totally. Oh, look at Wait, it. let me see. <laughs> it's <was> still drying. <laughs> oh my god! Please stop squeaking. Oh my god, that is so awesome. Do you love it? Show Katie, show Katie. That is so awesome. I'm happy uh, you like it, Derek. I'm not hating on the decorations at all. It's just not. I'm, it's too hot. So That's do you hilarious. Also hate when wow. Decorate for you in are oh, Halloween so hater so over there. I love well, when Jenna Me said too. that once November 1st hit, I didn't really think she was going to put out more pumpkins for Thanksgiving. I thought she said she was thinking she was going to Christmas, and I was in for that, too. I mean, maybe, but I will acknowledge Thanksgiving, whatever. I'm so, always a big fan of early transitions. Mm-hmm. Well, Halloween shows are awesome. You like spooky shows, though, Derek. I do. <laughs> He says he like does, spooky shows. but he doesn't actually watch that many spooky things. Mm-hmm. But He's a what my also the other thing is like I, there's really no like special summer decor. Like my decor has pretty much been the same since March. Yeah, because I well I didn't put anything out for Fourth of July except for like a, a mat and some towels. Like well was that was your mistake. Shelves. That's what we're gonna have to do next summer to uh, switch it up. But Fourth of July you gotta be tasteful. And it yeah, can easily tasteful. become tacky, and it, it, I just didn't have time for that this summer. You don't want all the flags. <laughs> <laughs> I don't oh know if people are gonna be able to hear. There. I don't know. I, I get mm, the American flag way over there. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just saying it can easily become a little tacky, in my opinion. And I didn't choose to decorate it's for it this you. year. It's him. Oh well, yeah. He said there's nothing tacky about America. Exactly. I didn't pull out the American flag right there. You USA. You do have your American flag in here. Okay, so let's move on. Today, you were listening to the episode that dropped today, which was Katie and I's interview with our girl, Kiki Southerd. She she is freaking cool. She, she She is awesome. She's incredible. She actually made me laugh. Good for her. Great qualities to have. Not just that, uh, also give Katie... Incredible advice. She did. Wow. Yeah. Jess Frick actually texted me and was like, oh my gosh, I'm halfway through this interview with Kiki Southern and I'm obsessed. She seems like such like a ray of sunshine and like she's the sweetest. Now I just want to meet her, blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, she's the best. That's exactly what I'm saying. You want to know what Kiki texted me this morning, Derek, when she was listening to the episode? What did she say? She wanted me to tell you that she did understand your Stranger Things references that you made about her. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. She got it. She was, she's a Stranger Things fan, so she yeah. understood when you introduced her in your weird Stranger Things voice. <laughs> Spooky. Well, that, that is true. I, that, that is true. I am a big Stranger Things fan. And that's just Stranger Things I watch. Also, like, like any... Gen- Gen- shows I watched before in Halloween season because I am that guy. Because yeah, you were more of like a PG-13 and under spooky sp- thing kind of person. Like you don't necessarily watch like the rated R super scary stuff that like Chris watches. But of course not. Yeah. <laughs> well... Derek's more of like the Disney Channel, Nickelodeon type of Halloween He's scary movie. He's mostly ghostly. Mostly and mostly ghostly. ghostly. Let me tell you. That's actually my, my favorite movie. <laughs> mostly ghostly. Mostly ghostly and the haunted hour. Was that that haunted house you used to watch all the time? No, that's Monster House maybe. Oh. Monster House. That's one of Okay, them. let me tell you. Mostly ghostly used to traumatize me as a child because oh, Derek watched that crap on re- Pete and that ghost was so scary he was scary just to look at he didn't have to do a thing Mm -hmm. and one of those characters were um what what what, Meg's dad oh from um the dad from Wizards Waverly Place was also in Mostly Ghostly yeah yeah and also Jerry Russo not sure what his act his real name is but that's his name in Wizards Waverly Place Russo Shout out Selena. New songs. Single soon. I loved the love from Taylor Swift to Selena Gomez. Taylor Swift posting Selena Gomez's promo in her story, like giving her bestie a shout out. It was the cutest little thing. Yeah, I also really liked Miley Cyrus's new song. 
I did. Mm-hmm. I liked the subtle scene on the parallels. No, 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 not that. It's called like <laughs> used to be young. Or used something. to be young. And she was wearing her Disney shirt under her shirt, uh-huh. like the Mickey Mouse shirt. Yeah. Oh, I didn't See watch. How, there's like a whole bunch of parallels between like how her outfits and like the outfits that she was wearing as Hannah Montana, like the outfit that she's wearing when she's singing that. I saw a, a picture of her as Hannah Montana wearing literally like a red sparkly top with like a white shirt underneath. It literally looked exactly the same. I was like, oh, yeah, there was a I lot of I didn't watch a video. I only that. listened to it when I was driving, so. I'll have to. Look there was a lot video. of thought that went into that. It was oh, very yeah. interesting to listen to her talk Wh- about one it. One of my favorite yeah. shows. Oh, I need to watch that. On is it uh, on TikTok? Mm-hmm. Uh, on Disney Channel, it's got to be Hannah Montana. Halloween got this shit. Of course. That show is, is pretty good because her um, cousin actually look like a say. We're gonna move on from the Halloween conversation, and I would <laughs> like to hear about Miss Baker's. First week as a teacher. Oh, uh, yeah. I've been waiting for like you mean, ever for this. Dude, I was like so ready to talk about this when the podcast started. And we talked about Halloween for so freaking long. I have no clue what I was supposed to talk about. Well, I mean, I don't know why you were planning it so hard. What I'm not, was it but like? I'm just like, gosh. Here, can I, I ask you a question? Would that be helpful? I would prefer a question than just, <laughs> what was her week like? Like, God, everyone's asked me that question already. How many times do I have to answer? It? Okay. Can I, can I t- do the honors? Do you have a question? Yes. Okay, well, I have questions, but Duh. you can go first if you would like. Thank you. Katie, you just got started. Your, your new job as a teacher, was it was it like to be the teacher? Jenna's going to ask you the same. How's it like to be the teacher? What does it be like for you? How's your students are doing? And tell me all about your new job. Well, that's just as vague as Jenna's question, but I guess I can go with it. You just start, and then I'll <laughs> ask you a more specific question. Um, it's been fun. I think that my coworkers are fabulous. I really enjoy... Um, fabulous? The simple request. Sorry, continue. All things fabulous. I really have been enjoying getting to know them, and I just think I feel very supported by them and things like that. Um, my kids are great. Um, we've had fun i try to start every class with good news and like ask my kids if they have good news and right now they're too shy to share so i just always have to share my own good news and they're just they they're a little reserved still but they're coming out a little bit and do you have more freshmen or freshmen and sophomores or is it pretty even mix or is it mostly freshmen so it's mostly freshmen i have three sections of students so two of my sections of students instead of seeing them every other day for math i see them every single day um it's a class called algebra every day and like it's just a little slower pace of algebra one so because that's a very dense curriculum and content to get through and it can be really challenging for a lot of kids like we have 15 sections of algebra and 10 of them are algebra every days and five of them are regular algebra ones that go every other day so that just kind of says like how dense algebra is and like how it's really good to be able to slow it down and just kind of give kids more time to process that. But me and my students have, I think we're starting to build good relationships. I'm doing really well with names in my algebra every days, but my geometry class, I only saw, I've only seen them like I saw them today for the third time. And one of the times that I saw them was for 15 minutes. So I'm not doing great with their names, um, but I'm working on it. And today I tried to remember a few and I'll remember more next class. And it's just hard because I see them every other day. And like we had the weekend in between and stuff like that. You'll get there. Yeah. So yeah. what is one of the most challenging things that happened last week that you had to deal with? And you can, it doesn't have to be like a specific, if, if you need to say something a little bit more vague to protect your students, that's fine. But I want to know like what's something that was a challenge to you and what was something that was like a highlight? There's been multiple things that have been challenging. One of which was me dealing with and helping a student through a escalation, I guess, if you will. She was really upset and just frustrated because she was struggling with math. And yeah, it's, I can't get into too many details, but it's just difficult to see uh, people my students especially at such a vulnerable place and to be so upset and that same girl actually had another breakdown today and she just doesn't feel like she's ready to be where she's at with math but I think she is actually 
And I told her that today. I said, I think that you are a lot smarter than you give yourself credit for. Um, but you just need to ask for help. And I told her that she needed to be her own advocate as well. I have that's a very feeling. Good advice. Yeah, that's great advice. I have a feeling yeah, that yeah, yeah. this person that you're talking about in a couple of months, you're going to have a really great relationship with her mm-hmm. just because you have already worked with her on such a hands on basis. And you're like, she's she's been willing to be vulnerable with you in that way. And I think the more you support her, the you're just going to build that and be such an influential part of her beginning of her high school career which I think is really awesome yeah for sure I was also just going to answer the other part of your question because you asked me something that's been challenging but you also asked me something that's been really positive yeah highlight yeah highlight and I think my highlight has been working with my co-teacher she's fabulous and I just feel so supported And um, I see her in one of my everyday classes. So I see her once a day, every day. I just feel very supported by her. And she's just been like very encouraging and telling me how good of a job I'm doing, knowing that it is my first time kind of doing this stuff. And so, um, yeah, it's been really nice to feel like I'm doing a good job. And I just I do feel supported even by not just her, but everybody. And so it's been a really nice environment to be working in. Well, that's good. I'm glad you chose that school and it sounds like it's Mm -hmm. been a good start for you. Do you have, I I know, so Katie is not in one classroom. You have a small desk on wheels sort of that you can take take from (laughs) one classroom to the next. How has that transitioning between classrooms been and not really having that homeroom? Like, has that been Mm -hmm. a challenge? Has it been okay? It's been fine, but oh my gosh, those dang cr- those dang hallways are so crowded during passing period. <laughs> and I'm rolling through with my car. So um, I start the day in one room each day, and then on A days I have my plan, so I have like a break, and then I have my last two in a in one class, a different class. So do you ever have to go from point A to point B in like that four minute period between classes like the students do? Or do you have a little bit more time than that? No, I don't. Thank goodness. Can you imagine? She's got like four minutes just wow. like the no, kids. I could but never. their right classes are right next door to each other. Oh, but it's just good. like hard to roll it through the halls when yeah. classing, when passing periods happening. But I do get to on mm-hmm. B days. I also have an academic lab type thing. And then I also have my uh, plan right after that before I have another class. And so I'm able to like kind of take that break to either at the end of my break or at the beginning of my break, like transfer my cart from one point A to point B. Except today I was cut it too close on time and I had to take my cart at the hall. And when that happens, it's just so difficult. And I'm like, nobody look at me. <laughs> oh my God. I would love to be a fly My on the next wall. question is, are you going to have Halloween dance? Okay, don't answer school? that. So in addition to the teaching, you are also Coach Katie. Or I'm sorry, I guess you're Coach Baker. Coach Baker. Um, Although one of my players calls me Miss Baker. It's so funny. (laughs) (laughs) Do you also have them in class? Is that why? Oh, okay. Well, they just choose that. I have one of my players in class and she doesn't, I don't know. I I don't know if she calls me Miss Baker or Coach Baker. I feel like. Uh, Yeah. Katie, how does it feel to be a softball coach? How is that like? That was essentially my question. How's the coaching life going? So Derek go ahead. Derek stole it from you. He sure did. You can have it. That's a very right. full circle question. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been really fun. We have a really great group of girls and it's just been fun to get to know them and, you know, help them improve their skills along the way. Oh my God, today they were cracking me up though. They were struggling with the simplest drill. And I was like... Mm. I was like, we can do it. (laughs) (laughs) Just do one without dropping the softball. You can do it. (laughs) To wrap up this conversation about your teaching, what are you most excited for about the remainder of this semester? Okay, I have to put a pin in that question. I did wear my teacher era shirt today and I didn't take a picture and I was like, dang it, because I like showed mom my outfit just by showing it, holding it up after I got home from softball practice. And she was like, oh my God, did you send a picture to your sister? And I was like, no, but my outfit was so cute. It was hilarious because I saw some teachers in the bathroom at lunch and I was like, how weird is it that none of my students have complimented my Taylor Swift shirt? 
<laughs> oh my god yeah but then i actually got compliments right after that so it's fine perfect you made I wore a, a taylor swift shirt besides this one i wore my cornelia street one to the doctor he's like cornelia street i was like yeah it's a taylor swift thing have you ever heard of it he was like no and i was like that's a shame yeah <laughs> that's hilarious you wore two taylor swift shirts wow. today yeah i have a lot for my birthday oh my god <laughs> i have a lot of red wrestling shirts cool. all right so so yes what am i looking forward to getting to know my students better and building relationships with them i think that there's a really great opportunity here for me to be able to connect with my students and just help them grow as people and in their math skills and things like that. I know that I do have a lot of students that struggle with math a lot and lack confidence within that. So I'm hoping that, you know, after a year together, they'll have a little bit more confidence and a lot more knowledge. And so I guess that's really my goal. I think that it's going to be a great semester semester year working (laughs) with my colleagues as well. I'm excited to get to learn more from them and They seem to think they're going to be learning from me, which I don't know about that. But (laughs) yeah, I'm excited. I think that it's going to be a great year and I'm just excited to see what comes. I mean, it's only been a few days. There's been no crazy bumps in the road yet. So hopefully we can continue on strong and only get better from here. Well, I'm really excited for you. I know last week was a little overwhelming, which did in part have to do with the heat. Let me get into this really quick. You guys, last week was my first week of teaching ever. And there was a freaking heat wave coming through St. Louis that over 100 degrees every single day of the week. Yeah. And like we legally cannot bring our girls outside to practice if the heat index is over 105. And it was like 110 every day, 115. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Ellis just said kids are soft. Okay. Well that's like, you know, for like liability sake and things, but, um, you know, legal jargon. (laughs) So I didn't think that this would happen, but as a first year teacher, first week ever teaching, I had two 13 hour days at the high school. Because you had to practice late. Because I had to practice late and it didn't make sense for me to drive home because then I would have to fight traffic to get back. And there just like wasn't enough space. And like I did have like time to do that is what I mean, not space. Um, And like just things. And that's just what I decided worked better because we had practice at 630. So I, I have to get to school at seven. So I was at school from seven to eight, two days in a row. And wow. it was 7 a.m. F- to eight. PM, by yeah. the way. Yeah. And oh my gosh, I was so tired. I literally like, I felt like I didn't see anyone or even get to hang out with my dogs or anything because I was just like coming home and trying to go straight to bed because I also was at school till eight, but I didn't get home till eight 30. And then I have to get ready for bed, make my lunch for the morning. And by then it's past my freaking bedtime. It's and what time is your alarm set in the morning? 5 a.m. Woo. That hurts me. No snoozing. No, not. I just, I mean, sometimes I'll set myself like a five minute alarm or something. Snoozing is bad for you. It takes her a long time to do her makeup. Oh yeah. It takes me an hour to get ready. So speaking of Katie being a teacher, a math teacher, (laughs) Megan and I decided, well, I think it was really Katie's idea, but Megan and I were her victims. (laughs) We We were victims. Victims of the math. You guys did good. You screwed me over. We took a math test last weekend. (laughs) It was a quiz. A quiz. It was five questions. And let me tell you, they've changed some shit since I was in high school. Pim does is no longer Pim does. Gem does. Gam does. Gam does. It stands for <laughs> grouping. It it makes sense, and it, you does can it? still teach PEMDAS. I mean, I didn't learn about grouping until last week when I was like, "Yeah, talking about order operations, PEMDAS," and they were like, "You know, it's GEMDAS now." And I was like, "It wasn't when I was in school." So I did have to ask multiple questions. Of yeah. The so really, too. Jenna lost that thing. Like she <laughs> totally won. We said, but <laughs> she tried to. Go out of the order of operations. No, no, no. To- That's why I asked the question. I knew I was confused and I, I raised my hand and I needed the teachers. I would call I- that an assisted win. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. So what happened was <laughs> Megan did get through the quiz first. And I don't know that I would have helped in that capacity if I was like treating it like a quiz. Okay. But if I was legitimately in your algebra class, I would have known that. But I haven't taken algebra in That's- 15 years. That's a strong statement. Oh my You're God. You're old. 
it 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 was a little <laughs> confusing. I had to ask a lot of questions to make sure I understood what the heck. There was no equal sign, which was really throwing it me off. It was an expression. I was expecting like all some you had to do has no over- meaning. You had to evaluate <laughs> the expression. So all you have to do is like create the math, like or not like expression is on a face and in a voice. I don't know what you're talking about. Expression and math. Expression. expression. Um, you had to narrow it down to one number. The you goal bas- was- it's basically like simplifying. Like it's just a string of like multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. I think she forgets that she actually teaches this stuff and I we know. don't know what we're doing. And I haven't but done like, it in with literally literally over half my life ago. ago. And equals is like when you're solving for something. Like you solve for X. And then I realized, which this like truly blew my mind when I said it out loud. It has been more than half of my life ago that I was 14 years old. I'm sorry, Jenna, old. what was that? More than half of my life ago. Could you say it one more time? You knew what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> I was 14. I'm 30. That's a really Please, long time ago. Your math is off. Probably. <laughs> you know. It was you torture me to just on it. I was in the board during the quit. Yeah, so well, we the comments. So funny. Derek did not want to <laughs> be there. He was so boring. He no. was so respectful, though. Well, we were like, Derek, you should sit there. I don't there. know if he was respectful. He was sitting there very quietly. We were like, Derek, you should sit there and you can commentate them taking this quiz. This is him <laughs> sitting there. I'm bored. He absolutely wanted this to is be boring. This other is places. boring. Well, what we, we, we thought it might be funny to make a TikTok out of it, but we knew that if Derek wasn't in it, that it you know, our our TikTok followers would be like, where's Derek? So that's why we thought we would have Derek commentate the quiz. And Derek had, okay, I think you would have been okay with it had we not been, like, we, we had just finished eating timing. dinner and he wanted to go back to watching Friday Night Smackdown. And we asked him to record this video before he finished Friday Night Smackdown, <laughs> which was where we went wrong. But we didn't have time to wait for him to finish Friday Night Smackdown to do it later. Dude, that so shit takes forever. We, he had to sit and record this video with us when he wanted to go back to his room to finish watching Friday Night Smackdown. And it was written all over his face that he was not happy about participating in our math quiz. Nope. <laughs> you bore me. <laughs> I know, I know. You made that math very clear. is pretty boring. Hey. I'll give him that. You okay. chose that when I'm teaching it. I well, that. that was horrible. Edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> Cut My it. whole body shivered. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I went. Don't make her do it again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably have to keep it in there twice. <laughs> Okay, so God, everyone just ignored that I did that. Okay, it did never happen. Everything's fine. <laughs> let's talk about Megan. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Our green light went out. <laughs> stop, Life. stop, stop. <laughs> we had the privilege and we were so lucky that we all got to grow up next door to one another. We did. Megan has lived next door to us since you Or did you, you were, guys live next door to me? Um, I lived there before you. Mm-hmm. Katie might That's not That's because you're old. Okay. <laughs> Derek, <laughs> and I, Derek and I most certainly lived on this street before you lived on this street because you... Moved in at what? Like you were two. <laughs> I feel attacked. It wasn't the GLG <laughs> until we were there. Yeah. There's. We've decided that in the family, there's a pre Katie era and there's a post Katie era. <laughs> oh, that's a good segue to Mimi. <laughs> 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 so, anyways, our grandma died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's dead. Megan, this is it was crazy. the hardest on Megan because Megan yeah. did live with her. You grew up with her. Yeah. And now Megan works on the floor that she died on. I do. So, Megan's a nurse. I am a nurse. And, you know, I have a shirt that says I'm in my nurse era. Oh, my God. I'm in my teacher era. I know. I, I wore it today. Crazy. I love that. We're in our Baker Banter era. Okay. He, he, he missed my high five. <laughs> We're going to move on from that. So you are. You are, you are a nurse. And the first day on your new floor, I had the room that Mimi died in. Good. <laughs> hey Megan and okay wait I we was like talk, we're really ripping off this band-aid we need to talk <laughs> post Katie pre Katie era do you want to explain wait let Derek ask his question my question to you did Mimi Baker haunt you 
in the same room. Ooh. No, you see she her? has not. And I have had that room since. I do feel like I can feel her presence there sometimes when I'm in times of need. But in a good way? In a good way, okay. not a bad way. Sometimes <laughs> the lights flicker and I'm like, Mimi. You're like, Gladys. <laughs> I'm like, who else could it be? <laughs> <laughs> She's like there to support Uh-oh. Megan. She's not haunting her. Yeah. And I did have a patient the other day that reminded me a lot of Mimi. Oh, that's sweet. And it was very touching because I couldn't see Mimi's eyes before she had passed. And it had been a long time. And the way that my patient was looking at me reminded me of Mimi. That's sweet. Well, I'll cry. Well, if you stand right next to the door, do you see your, your dead grandma? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> And just, I'm very thankful yes for, for that. <laughs> Sometimes. For shock effect, should she say yes? Probably. <laughs> I, I should be scared of when I see, see Abigail. Like, what was it she should say? No, 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 no. Okay, Derek's when back you, on the Halloween train again. We're going to move on from that. <laughs> when you um, are in the hallway, do you see that picture we took as a family? <laughs> Sometimes. Oh. I'll like look down the hall and I'm like, wow, family memories. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god no i was listening to a podcast recently and there was a nurse on there and they were talking about families taking photos at the hospital that's so <laughs> weird to me and i was thinking it, about how we did that we did and it. i was like i was I like this is so strange that. bro well, i took a picture of, of jeff and tara oh with god, mimi, with mimi. Oh, that, no. and she sent it for the board. <laughs> She sent it to be in like, the God. funeral. You know that. Well, we didn't put it on the board. We, didn't. we, we did not put that on the board. Jeff and Tara, if you're listening, Our we love you. We do love Dave you. Dave Warren <laughs> almost haunt us here. Our Papa Warren does not haunt us, Derek. Really? Let let the mask check. The lights went out. That doesn't mean it was Multiple Papa. Times. Flicker, flicker. You flicker, want to know something, Derek? Ain't no way you're going to blame that something? on Papa Warren. So the other day, my mom and I had just mentioned Mimi. And it was just really random. <laughs> we were talking about like how she had fallen before we put her in the nursing home and she had to go to the hospital. And just as we said that, a cardinal flew and set perched up like on the lights because we like see her in cardinals because she oh, always yes, had, of course. Per- you know, and she literally per- like it perched up on the lights. And I was like, oh, my God, she's listening. <laughs> she's here. <laughs> she's watching me. <laughs> oh, my God. That's hilarious. That is absolutely so scary i wouldn't say it's scary though but i understand how you could feel that way like i see papa warren in rainbows rainbows yeah. remind me of papa warren yeah i saw an awesome that double rainbow the other day double the love that could be the case but the uh, the other week when, when when i was watching nxt the lies went flicker flicker flicker, flicker that flicker, doesn't flicker, mean flicker. it was a one of our dead relatives, Derek. Why do you got to blame that on Papa Warren? <laughs> shit, bro, maybe he, it's he Papa was Baker. Me. <laughs> he was not haunting you. Do you hear me? I said, shit, maybe it was Papa Baker. I don't think it's... Could be both of them. <laughs> maybe maybe Papa Warren they were probably was just saying hi. And Papa Baker was turning him back on. Or maybe it was Mark's dead grandparents. That would be a very good twist. Oh boy. Okay, now no, we're going no. down a hole. We we are. Can, we, can we, we move on from this? I, I'm <laughs> on out. We're gonna I'm move on. Scared right now. We're gonna move okay, on. You. We're gonna move on. But Mark, just so you all know, Mark is Derek's imaginary brother. Oh my so, god! Yeah, I'm not just putting that on someone. But yeah. yes, Derek. Mimi Mark is Derek's Mark. imaginary brother. Mimi's passing was very difficult for me because I held so much love for her, and she was like my second parent because I didn't have a second parent. Shout out to the deadbeat. <laughs> no she said that we i wasn't gonna go there but, well that's gonna be that's gonna come up later when we talk about yeah well things. okay so let's let let's to to transition to close this mimi chapter let's tell the infamous mimi oh and Derek my story gosh oh my because, god okay Mimi is not lo- with us any longer, and nor did she have the mental capacity to recount this story. But Megan is mm. the one and only Maybe, person. Maybe. I was the only one to bear witness, and that Megan was Megan witnessed the police officers in her house when Derek called nine one one on Mimi Baker, <laughs> and we are going to talk about it Maybe right now. Maybe Mimi Baker did that to me. No no, 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 no. Don't you don't call 911, danger grandma. You were the one that dialed 911 
and told the operator that your grandmother, you were in grave danger. That's what he said. I'm in grave danger and I'm with my grandma. Oh you my know, God. so, okay, I'm going to set, I'm going to tell the story, like the, the overarching story. And then you're going to tell the, the, what happened when you got home. Okay. So this is the general story. Derek was on one that morning. So was Mimi. Okay. I woke up that morning. I was, I was working at a restaurant at the time. So I had to be at my shift at 11 AM. I woke up at approximately like 945 to Mimi blaring her car horn outside of our house. <laughs> nonstop. Derek had just gotten in the shower. Okay. So I don't know why she was blaring the horn. I walk outside groggy, confused, what in the world's happening i'm like mimi why are you doing this please stop honking your horn and she's like derek and i are going to get breakfast I, he told me he was ready i'm like he ain't ready girl he just got in the shower okay you got to give him a minute so that's how it started they were already sassy with one another she was sassy he was taking his sweet time it's well it's just two stubborn minds and yes. poor timing yes <laughs> and I think you like so eventually you get ready Mimi stops honking the horn in the driveway and the two of you leave. You go to get your breakfast, which was a normal thing for you guys to do. You guys would go get your breakfast and then you would go to the park and you would eat your breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. That was kind of, kind of true. And you would people watch. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So they would go people to watcher. They Mimi would go, loved people watch. Mm-hmm. So Mimi and Derek would go to the park together with their breakfast. They would eat their breakfast and they would people watch. Well, Derek also <laughs> Does that liked sound creepy. Well, they would just sit there. They would just enjoy the outdoors. I feel like they people would... watching is a very normal thing okay, to do. Okay, people watching is normal. It's, I feel like it sounds well, creepy I when we it. say it like this. <laughs> I do it all the time. <laughs> no, That's they, true. They would just be we didn't follow. The, they would just be sitting on a bench, eating their breakfast, and just enjoying the outdoors at the park. So they do this that day. And for whatever reason, Derek liked to go see the waterfall at the park, right? Mm -hmm. So that day, for whatever reason, Mimi did not want Derek to go see the waterfall. She thought they needed to leave as soon as breakfast was over. Well, Derek decided in his stubborn little 17, 18 year old brain, however old he was, he might've been 19, actually. He was probably 19. So in Derek's stubborn 19 year old independent brain, he decided my grandma told me not to go see the waterfall, so but I must go. She is an old lady and she ain't going to catch up with me. So she I'm going to go anyway. <laughs> so Derek takes his trash. He takes Mimi's trash and he goes to see the waterfall, even though Mimi Baker had told him not to go see the waterfall. You got to be quicker than that. So Derek walks off, headed to go check out the waterfall as he normally does. And at some point, Mimi realizes that Derek is not in her line of sight and she starts to panic. So Mimi, God bless her soul. (laughs) Mimi, if we're being truthfully honest, she needed to have her keys taken away before this point. Absolutely. But that was a very difficult thing for our parents to do. My, our dad and your mom, our Especially siblings. Especially like wh- where she was with her dementia. She was still very much independent. And she, it's like losing that independence for yeah. somebody with dementia. Yeah. Like that's really hard for them to go through. L- so, so, and she wasn't ready yet. <laughs> Mimi Baker haunt me to, to haunt me when I was at NXT to laugh you off, 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 flicker, flicker, flicker. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe she was haunting you for this reason. We'll give it to you. Okay. Good. Okay. We'll give it to you. So, As yes. I get a, a p- only you want you to freaking payback. You're not even here right now. Okay, I'm going to well, go back to the story. It was a good thing, though, because I will say Mimi did lose her keys very shortly after this No, that story. was it. This was, this was the final straw. There yeah. was no. This was what ended it. She In lost fact. her keys like a day later, and she never drove again. So that day, <laughs> Derek had decided he was going to go over to the waterfall. Mimi is panicking at this point because she can't see Derek. She doesn't know where he's gone, and she chooses to get into her car <laughs> and... She chooses to drive her car on the bike path to go find Derek. Logical choice, I think. I mean, so I'm loving the problem solving (laughs) skills. At this point, 
she is driving her car on the bike path. Multiple people are approaching her, knocking on her window. Excuse me, ma'am, you can't drive here. Um, excuse Listen. me, you're not supposed to be on this path. This is the bike path. <laughs> I wouldn't mind my own Little damn business. Little they know what was to follow. <laughs> and at, at some point, while Mimi is on the bike path, Derek has returned from the waterfall, sees Mimi's car on the bike path, realizes it's Mimi's car, proceeds to come running up to Mimi's car and starts yelling at Mimi. So now we have the 80 something year old grandmother (laughs) who probably shouldn't be driving and the 19 year old grandson with Down syndrome yelling at each other in the park. And the two of you get into Mimi's car and you drive home from the park. And in during that drive, Derek, you and Mimi continue your argument. And at some point you call 911 on your grandmother. I, I told you I don't want to do this. So you want to do the finish the story, that's on you. <laughs> if I get hold it again, I'm blaming you. So Mimi has driven on the bike path. Mm-hmm. Derek comes back. The two of them get into an argument. Derek's telling Mimi, Mimi, you cannot drive on this bike path. This is not a place for cars. Derek is aware of this. The two of them get in the car. They continue to argue. I believe at some point Mimi did maybe hit you or give you a little backhand tap like she did yes and Derek was not happy about that and Derek did choose at this point to call 911 on his grandmother and at that point you know the 911 operator they probably are uh, aware of the fact that the person on the other line is distressed and and you were talking about your grandma and your grandma being in danger. They probably thought y- your grandma was in danger, not that your grandma was the danger. Probably but not very comprehensible. It was Derek was probably very heightened emotions. Mimi was probably very heightened emotions. I believe you told her you were going to call 911 and she said, do it. So <laughs> that's, that's like the story I remember. That's the story how it went. So they get home. Because we live next door to one another. Mm-hmm. They get home and the police show up and Megan gets home from her last day of class as mm-hmm. a junior in high school. Yeah. yeah. And what happened? So I drive up and there's two officers. Derek's at the top of the driveway and Mimi's down by the officers. And I was like, good Lord, what is going on? So I park my car. I get out and I'm like. Derek's heightened emotions. He's like yelling a little bit. And I'm like, okay. He would never do that. No, never. Doesn't sound like him at all. And I'm like, okay, how are we going to handle this situation? So uh, I told the officers, I was like, thank you guys for coming. Everything is okay. I have it from here. I am 17 years old. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, all right, we're doing this. So I get them inside. I sit them down and I said, okay. We're going to talk over what happened. I need Mimi. You go first. So Mimi basically tells me a very confused synopsis because mm-hmm. of her dementia. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, Derek, what happened? And Derek was like, Megan, Mimi is a villain and I need a backup. And I was <laughs> like, okay. So then I called your parents and they didn't know what to say. They were like, what is happening? As just as like, just like I was, I have a video of your dad from the day and he's sitting on the couch and he's just like, I don't know whether to ground him or laugh. Like (laughs) it was just a chaotic, very chaotic moment. But yeah, that day they were not getting along very well. Yeah. And I think that part of the reason that Derek uh, gets a little bit frustrated when we bring this story up is because we did talk to him and we did say, you know, that's, we don't call the police on our grandma. Like right. when, if she's hurt or there is danger, yes. But like, and so I don't think that's a moment he's necessarily very proud of, but it's a good lesson. Yeah. Lesson learned. There you go. There you go. Do you, you guys hear me, right? Yeah, I we hear can you. hear you. Yeah, you can hear yourself because on. you put your headphones you. on weird. Okay, Derek. I have to because I don't want to listen to this, this stupid story. <laughs> okay, Girl Derek. Thank you for him. being a good sport and letting us finish the story. You're like right. Good's a strong word. More we like thanks for being a sport. <laughs> Catherine. And for a record, sport. I never could call the cops on Katie. Oh, well, maybe you should next time. I'm pushing it. That was a bad idea. It was, it was a joke. We don't learned our that. lesson. We're not going back. <laughs> and plus, 
I don't have to call uh, call the cops or get it. I was one tough policeman. I punched her in the face before. <laughs> you did punch Katie in the face once, and you're lucky she didn't call the police on you. Is that why she looks like that? That is crazy. <laughs> okay, we're not this gonna is dive. Gonna rye, man. Oh my gosh, we're I not... really want to talk about when Katie asked me what was wrong with her face the other day, and I told her the flat out truth. <laughs> no, <I'm laughs> it was so <laughs> scary. But it's no, fine. no, no. Yeah, what I want to talk about now is you had the closest relationship I to did. Derek in high school. Mm-hmm. You went to high school with Derek longer. Well, I never went to high school with Derek. Katie only went to high school with Derek for a year. year. Yeah. You went to high school with Derek for three years? Yes. I was, in fact, Derek's cousin. Yes. So <laughs> I want to know, like, you have the best perspective of yeah. Derek's high school career. So I let's honestly talk about really it. loved watching Derek go through high school. I remember at our choir concert, his last one senior year, I was bawling my eyes out singing Like an Eagle. Oh, I bawled every year. At that <laughs> I song. literally could not handle my emotions because I was just so proud of him and what he was able to accomplish and how everybody was so loving towards him and everybody just were he was like a star even before Baker Banter at our high school how popular was Derek in high school extremely popular he was like like, he was everybody knew Derek everybody loved Derek there was just it, so much support and love, love surrounding right? him. Extreme love. You know, we actually used extreme to have... Extreme love rules. You Dude, know, right? what are stop, you doing? Stop interrupting. <laughs> and he just keeps saying extreme love rules. Extreme love rules. So uh, one of the things that actually happened when Derek was in high school that's kind of hilarious now is we actually I struggled... I listen to this one. We actually struggled with Derek getting to and from his classes because there's only a four minute break between class and my guy's kind of slow anyways and I'm great he i got a whole story i will say that later he would have so many people that wanted to give oh, him yeah. hugs when they saw him in the hallway that he started becoming late to every single class he went to and it was a big struggle for my mom and his teachers it's, it's literally almost like if i'm okay to be this dramatic he needed like a secret service security set up so that people weren't allowed to like talk to him talk to him yeah because <laughs> if people would talk to him he wanted to stop and talk to the pretty girls oh yeah and he wanted to stop he and talk to the cool the guys. He was quite the ladies, man. I know. Dude, and That's even when I joined solid. high school and I was a freshman and he was a senior. Shout out to For like, For like years after that, I'm Derek's sister. Even like once yeah. he's gone and I'm the only one left there. Derek's like, sister. I can't, Derek's I can't sister even forever. fill the shoes that Derek Well, had people really didn't made. know you were Derek's cousin because you don't have the Baker name. Okay, we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> okay, don't out her like that. She was Derek's but cousin. I'm, no, she was, she Derek's, was Derek's, cousin, Derek's cousin, but only the OGs knew that. Like, only the real... I feel like it was pretty well known that I was in the family. I do look like you guys. I think it That's was well known. By the way... Just not by people my grade and younger, because you were no. so... Yeah. Megan? But, like, yeah. I am going to love to, and love to say this. I think you are my favorite sister right now. <gasps> You're my sister, and I love you so much. I, this is right here. I don't know what's so going warm. on between them, but you are, are my sister. You're my blood, and and I, I really wanted to have another big sister like you. So, so Megan, <laughs> you are older than Megan. You are older than me, but. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't process that at all. I was like, oh. <laughs> but you and I have a, a, a credible journey together. Mm-hmm. We have a credible time together. And and I'm proud to say you're my big sister. And I love you. And I love you too. And you, you know what else? What? You're my favorite sister. You said uh, that. I'm going to remember this moment forever. You should. This is this. You're my favorite sister because <laughs> someone in this room is going to bring him the 911 thing. You yeah, know, Megan, it's not that big of an honor because he does tell us all the time his imaginary siblings are also his favorite. Yeah, but I've always been his favorite. Yeah, yeah. Well. And you know that's true. Or Leah Mysterio has been his favorite sister before, too. You and Le- Leah Mysterio. 
So I believe one time there, there, or maybe it was more than once, but I know there was at least one time where there was maybe like a bullying incident happening and you had to step in. Can we talk about that? It was on the school bus. This kid in the back was being very rude to Derek and I was not having it. Derek was getting very upset and he started yelling back <laughs> of course he did <laughs> hey that's my guy <laughs> and if I there's one thing up, up, and, and I was us, like you need to yell. shut up right now there's literally no reason for you to be attacking him and so he sat back down and that was that and I was in the front because I was just a little freshman and your cousin <laughs> stood up for you it did how does that make you feel like I said before, Megan is the sweetest thing on this earth. <laughs> Only one person that come with me is damn it will be Megan freaking Allen. You are the version like Seth, Seth freaking Ryan. <laughs> you are the better version of him. Better version of Seth Ryan. I agree. Version. Cuter version too. He's pretty handsome too, so yeah. you're welcome. Yes. Thank you. So what I'm saying right now, Megan... I am glad, glad you're my cousin. I, I'm glad you're my sister, and I am so blessed to have you. I'm uh, blessed really to have too. you. That's Aww. so sweet, Derek. That's so sweet. So you kind of went there earlier, but I wanted to talk about you know your relationship with our dad because yes. I think that my actual father. <laughs> You guys, oh my God. When we were going through pictures of um, just our lives and stuff when we meet past, because Megan and I mm-hmm. were in charge of pictures, I like sent a picture in the group chat with me and Jenna and our parents of Megan and our mine and Jenna and Derek's dad. Of Baker Banter Baker Dad. Baker Banter Dad. And I said, I said, <laughs> Megan and her dad with like these like sarcastic emojis and like, ah, Megan and her dad. And my mom's like, you do realize that's your dad, right? girl that, that's yes and it was a joke <laughs> i actually responded oh my god really i've never seen that man before <laughs> <laughs> but you yeah so you don't have the best relationship with your dad no. so our dad has been especially growing up next to one another and yeah i mean you had papa He's baker been for a while a very big father figure in my life like we would go fishing he took me to those pitching lessons once that she literally so <laughs> just he was wrongfully so like threw in the trash she honestly wasted her mom's money so bad on that but that's speaking just i didn't like it she got lessons for a whole year and then quit softball before she could put it in. i game. didn't like it that is crazy <laughs> speaking of that um she didn't want to play softball with me that is correct to wrap it up like what is what does our dad mean to you he is my dad. He will always be my dad. He comes over and yells at me to clean my room. He was the last person to take your final binky away. I remember. Yeah, that, that was traumatic. It happened right out there. As if I wasn't going through enough already. He was like, <laughs> he was like, no, she's done. She doesn't need these binkies anymore. He used to come over there and wake you up sometimes. He, he, you'd still be in bed and he'd be like, are you kidding me? It's time to get up. <laughs> oh, he did bed. not discriminate against you. No, he I was treated definitely you like count a daughter your too. Yeah. Or tickle your feet. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, God. I am not <laughs> ticklish because dad tickled my feet. So I much think up. that your dad treated me the same way that he treated all of you, <laughs> which did. is why he is my dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where's it like a tease a lot of times? Mm-hmm. I still love him, but he, he need to stop teasing people. He would he, call that tough love. He does yeah, like to give us love, all tough right. love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I speaking of that, sorry to interrupt you again. When how do you feel when my dad is going to adopt you? Oh, <laughs> I don't know that he's going to adopt me. But if anything were to happen to my mom, I would consider. Really? Yeah. That's just a fresh thought that I just had. Well, <laughs> yeah, this is crazy. Well, this is <laughs> be, Moving be on. Get awesome. If. No, it wouldn't, because that means something would have happened to Aunt Mm -hmm. Dana, you you weirdo. She's already like a sister to us. It doesn't need to be legal on paper to feel that way. She's already our sister cousin. The feelings are still the same. If you you get adopted, that means you could be a way better sister. I mean, I don't think I don't think that piece of paper would change anything between us. I don't think the piece of paper would change anything at all. Mm -mm. So I have a question for you. I want to know. Please do that, Eric Baker. I want to stop this woman. Derek, chill, bro. (laughs) So I would like to know 
what was your initial thought when we started Baker Banter? What did you think about us doing that? And then kind of like fast forward to now, what is it like for you? I mean, you, of all of the people in our lives, as a, like, from an age level perspective, like you yeah. are our closest peer that yeah. knows us the best. I remember you calling me. Yeah. So like, what, what do you, what were your thoughts? You had called me and you were like, I'm going to start a TikTok," And I was like, go for it. <laughs> and you went for it. <laughs> and be the girl who I think went for it. Yeah. She was that girl. And it, it's been amazing watching what you guys have been able to do. Like, I think it was so cool. Just Derek being at the slammies. I thought that was going to be the peak, but you guys have just keep topping it and it's crazy. I'm so proud of you and I am uh, like so grateful for how people have accepted you guys online. There are a few. I will come for you. (laughs) (laughs) We are not afraid. Here's the thing about Baker women. We say what we think. Bro, I will clap back. (laughs) If there's anything I'll do, it's clap back. You want to know what I said when I started Baker Banter? I So it it was like a whirlwind of a day because that morning we had changed the concept again. And then we like made the last final video that we decided to post. And and that's the one we ran with. And that's how we got to this point now. But I, we were, Chris and I were like an hour late to go hang out with our friends who we had plans with that day because I had been working on this content and I was determined to get it out that day because it was World Down Syndrome Day. And I was like, okay, today is the day. Like if we're going to do it, we got to do it now. And I walked into my friend's house and I said this in the most dramatic way I could possibly (laughs) say it. And I just swung the door open and I said, today is the first day of the rest of my life. I have no words. I said that. That was the exact thing <laughs> I know that story. I said. <laughs> and it is just crazy that she said that it because is she is just so crazy yeah. for saying that. But and that, then but it, it coming that true. That was such an original thought. I am like manifesting. She I'm, is the queen of manifesting. She is. I will speak that shit into existence. I will speak But I do it really love existence. how everybody just gets to see Derek, how we yeah. see Derek. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's, it's like well, and I would like your take on drinks. this. I think we, you know, one thing that I try to tell people is, you know, we as who we are hasn't changed a whole lot. Of course, we've continued to grow as people right. like we would have without Baker Banter. Oh, Derek's a whole lot different than when we started. We, I think we all are. We've grown a lot yeah. in our communication skills and our, I mean, do you remember how much like we used to argue, like just our ability to work together and like. Well, yeah, that, I know that. Like, yeah. I know Small that we steps. as people have continued to grow Thank and, you for the happy in pills. that way. <laughs> but I think what I mean is like who we are and the impact we have on the people around us has not changed. Right. Like we have always had really great relationships with our family and our friends yeah. and other people who have just loved and adored us because they know us from the community. I mean, and the now only we thing that's to, really different is that you guys record more of it. Yeah. And now we get to share it with so many more people. Yeah. But this is us. Yeah, it really is. Everything we do is truthfully just Baker. Baker Bakerisms. Yeah, Yeah, it really is. I mean, what I see online is very... I Sometimes I'll watch the TikToks or I'll listen to the podcasts and I'll just like close my eyes and I'm like, wow, I'm in the room room with them. That's crazy. Yeah. I was like, it just feels so normal. Right. Yeah. And I feel like we're just, we truly and are we just were, creating an we extension. We were recording everything before. We just didn't post it anywhere. Well, that that was the whole point of Baker Banter. Yeah. Like, and that's how it got started because my roommate at the time did say to me, like, you guys all make videos of Derek when you see him anyways. Why don't right. you just put it in one spot? Right. Instead of Megan posting it to her page, instead of Katie posting it to her page, me posting it to my page, like, let's make one spot for mm-hmm. all that content. Because we all did that anyways. Yeah. Because he's hilarious and he's a rock star. Yes. And I'm and leaving my freaking dream. Yeah, that's the main thing. And you've always wanted to be famous. That is true. You know what my dreams will be? What? St. Louis, Missouri. Friday Night Smackdown. In a ring with the, the greatest wrestler all time, John Cena. Okay, let's manifest it, baby. Put it there. So last thing for you, Meg, I know today you went to your very first ever therapy session. I did. How was it? It was really good. I honestly really liked her. Sometimes you kind of have to date your therapist. Definitely. A couple times. But I was able to use um, psychologytoday.com. 
a plug for them. <laughs> Thank you for the help. <laughs> but um, I had a video that I had seen of her, which honestly helped me. I went through a few of them and I was like, you know what? I feel like I would probably really gel with her. And I actually woke up late for my I was supposed to be on there at 815. I woke up at 830 and I How texted ADHD her frantically. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I set all these alarms and not a single one of them woke me up. <laughs> and then she did let me get on and finish my session and she said something today that actually really resonated with me because with the you know having my dad and not having your dad not having him yeah (laughs) all those emotions they kind of come out as anger these days sure and she told me that anger is a secondary emotion which I've never heard it put like that before so what does that mean so that means that anger can stem from hurt or disappointment Okay, so it's like a result of a different emotion. Yes, yes. And that just really resonated with me. I was like, that's really true. Yeah. It is a secondary emotion. Because sometimes, like, things will happen, and I'll just be bubbling up with anger. And I'm like, I'm so mad right now. But I, after she said that, I was able to kind of, like, look back on some of those times. And I was like, wow, it's actually because I was just really sad. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so is she saying that like as a way is like anger is like more controllable than other? Yeah, basically like if we are to. So she gave me homework. She wanted me to go through and write down significant events in my life that have been a trigger, I guess you could say, to my anxiety and my depression. And she wants to identify what those are so that we can kind of talk them out and process them. Because when all this happened, I was so young. I didn't really have. Yeah. The ability to do. I mean, you moved process in it the way I could today. Like you I moved, and your mom in moved in at two in and a two. half. Yeah. Yeah. So like I probably have a more. I remember more of your parents being together as a unit than you do. Yeah. Because I was for sure. around you. And it's also like when things like that happen, you suppress them and you yeah. don't want to think and about you it. Too. <laughs> yeah. And when they separated. Right. So like a lot of the things that I went through as a child, like I do remember vaguely, but I don't, I haven't really taken the time to like sit down, think about them, you know, understand why they hurt me so bad. I mean, it's understandable, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> but recognizing it. Yeah. Like actually recognizing it, processing it and then getting over it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Identifying it, saying it out loud yeah. so you can move on. So that's why when she said that, I was like, that's actually a really good point. So that's how I know she's going to be a good therapist. Well, I'm really happy for you to keep going. I'm proud of you, Megan. I think that this is a really good step for you. And I Mm -hmm. hope that you're able to find some healing from it. And yeah, whether or not you ever have a relationship with your father again. Yeah. I just hope that you can look back on that with less resentment. Yeah. Because I mean, like, while it hurt you, it also made you who you are today. Right. Which is a strong, beautiful young woman live my own experiences exactly and that will one day help me in another way because you're gonna be the best mom ever because you want to make sure that you are able to give your child which i mean obviously your mom's great and that's but another thing i'm very thankful for andrew mm-hmm. i was Andrew's gonna say my boyfriend you found a partner too that i truly believe will yes support you in every single mm-hmm. way be the partner that you deserve yes. be caring be, be the dad that your children deserve like yeah it's, it's i'm so excited and i for feel you. like that's also gonna help heal my inner child mm-hmm. just watching how andrew is with our future children yeah mm-hmm. and them getting all the love that I didn't. And he's when so I was patient. Younger. And, and he is so kind. Mm-hmm. Like he's just speaking of, speaking of that. Still I waiting on that ring. <laughs> same. Same girl, same. It's a race okay. to the finish. It is this a race is like, to the finish. This is like the race to the okay, moon. Mm-hmm. But well, the moon my is question. The on the <laughs> yes, Derek. For you, Megan. This is going to be the last question for Megan. Then we got to move on to the weekly wrestling wrap up. Good. My question is um, when you and Andrew get dated for a while uh-huh. b- become a boyfriend and girlfriend how's that relationship is going how, how the, how's it's that going, going really good i think you know andrew very well so you can see how it's going really good he's we very kind andrew. he's very patient he's compassionate he is so loving he's very tall <laughs> which i love i bet like Every time I sit next to Andrew, I feel like a little, little tiny ant. 
A little tiny. Yeah, yeah, you're funny for that dance. And I love how much Andrew and Chris love each other. I know. I love I know their relationship so, so much. There's so a certain picture Bro's of Andrew man. and Chris at the Cardinals game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chris is my boyfriend and Andrew's her boyfriend and they are best buds. They could not be happier together. Honestly, I think they love each other more than they love us. Oh, well, it's like a like Chris wants to know like who's going to be there. Because oh, yeah. are Megan and Andrew going to be there? Because it's that really is a defi- deciding factor. It's really Andrew. But but if Andrew's going to be there, it's because you're going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like he, he wants to know who the lineup of people are going to be before he agrees to everything. Yeah. If it's not a mandatory event He's that he coming. has to join me for, <laughs> he needs to know whether or not Andrew's going to be there. Yes. And if Andrew's going to be there, he'll go. And if and Andrew's really not going to be there. Because I don't, I, you guys are my siblings. Like, right. I don't have direct siblings in person. Who's your favorite? Oh, which one? That's, that's crazy. Really tough. Just say Derek. It's it fine. is no, you, no, Derek. no, 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 no. That yes. is so crazy. It's fine. Just let him, let him, let him have it, Katie. It's you, Katie. Yes. I'm just kidding. That was a lie. I was her favorite. I first. still hear you. That's because Jen is old. Yeah, I know. That's why I said it. <laughs> that's <laughs> not necessarily true because you were both there. Yeah, but she liked me more because she was a girl and I was a girl. Yeah, but Derek was cute AF. There are so many pictures of me and Jenna matching. We were matching all the time. You and Derek were so cute. And then Little Jenna got together. old. And then you and I started matching. I was yeah. your Jenna. Yeah. You all, we switched outfits. Uh-huh. Like, wow. Okay. Megan, I love you so Good much. Family. We'll definitely have to have you on again so we can keep talking about some of these things. But we do have to move on. Mm-hmm. It is time for the weekly wrestling wrap-up. Yep. So we have a handful of things, and we got to get through these fast because we did ramble a lot today. So first things first. Don't a- you make me, make me, make me a bit, bit, bit. R.I.P. We love her. We're not talking about her anymore. We're talking about yeah. wrestling, okay? Wrestling. Anyways. First things first, AEW, All In, MJF, Adam Cole. Please tell me what happened, who won. I need to know. I'd rather talk about the man in the room, Roger Strong. Roderick Strong. He interfered with Adam Cole and MJF. Is that correct? Yes, he did. Okay, well, then we're all, we're still talking about the same thing that I asked you about. So tell me about it. Who well, did his interference benefit? Uh, let's see. To interfered at All In, it was insane. Because I was shoving to that, but first, Walter Strong, what the hell was his thinking? What was he? Do- what did he do? Oh, let's see. He's writing a test, trying to test the friendship of Adam Cole, who is a really friend. He is really is. It's Roger Roger Strong or MJF. So he was trying to test Adam, Adam Cole, Cole and MJF's friendship. Yes. But they were fighting that, one another, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. The match is what's going on. Who won? I will get to that in a minute. You know, that already kind of seems suspense. like a test to the friendship, regardless of Roderick Strong. Just if they're tell me who won. Exactly. Answer the question. MJF. Thank you. So Roderick Strong interfered with Adam Cole so that MJF could win. That could be the case. Yes. Anyway. That guy was saying about Roger Strong. Roger Strong is a piece of shit. He's a jerk. Oh, gosh. Wow. So I wasn't strong expecting that. Roderick. I am no longer a Roger Strong fan anymore. You know why? Because he's a piece of shit and a jerk. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what I heard. Exactly. Period. He <laughs> was, was Adam Cole to use the, the championship trying to win so they went that way. I told him to. I told him no. Don't do it. Do not listen. He didn't listen to you. <gasps> You're telling me he didn't hear you talk to him from through the television, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> Blasphemy. He was in London. Actually, oh he God, did listen to me. Plenty close but enough. But he did not do it. Oh. He did not do How it. How to hear you? Because I'm sure you have a and I. I and of course, friendship is still strong. Roger Strong is trying to to tear it down. Okay, well that's trash. That's shocking. The, there's a whole thing when MJF won the match. Okay, well MJF won. We're gonna move on from this. I heard, I heard a rumor that I think is true that 
one of our uh, somebody we love very much, Mercedes Monet, mm. was made an appearance. Most Mercedes no- Monet, formerly known as Sasha Banks, Sasha Banks, oh. made an appearance at AEW All In. Is this true? Can you confirm? Yes, yes. I think Miss Sasha Banks flash. Mercedes Monet is what we're going to call her because that's what she likes to go by now. That name, I'm trying to get to it. Mercedes. Mercedes Monet. Good job. Is joining AEW. I think she is done with. She was wrestling in like Japan or something. Yeah, Japan. That is so exciting. Ooh, so, that is so fun. Mercedes. Mercedes Shasha. Welcome to AEW. <laughs> I hope we get to see her in an AEW. That would be so cool. Yeah, that would be Let's so awesome. Let's take what I'm saying. Too. Let's go to freaking Chicago. All right. Well, we'll see what we can do. Good. I did see that on AEW to not to bring it down, but I am going to bring down the mood here a little bit. There was two deaths in the wrestling community last week. So Terry Funk passed away. He oh, was older. Eyes. He was 79 years old. He was, say that again, Derek. He was, Terry Funk was, was my idol. Yeah, he was an idol of the, somebody that Derek loved very much. Um, he passed away on Wednesday, and less than 24 hours later, Bray Wyatt passed away. It's crazy. Terry Funk was older. He was 79. Bray Wyatt was 36 years old. Oh my God, really? With a, I believe, a fiance. I, 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 I'm not sure that they were married, but... Um, a fiance and two children. Oh my gosh. Um, he supposedly he did, ha- um, catch COVID earlier this year. It sounds like maybe that exacerbated a heart issue that he was already having. Mm. Um, he was scheduled to fight Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania. He was supposed mm. to, and then he got taken off of that the roster because of health issues Mm. and then recently he actually got cleared to come back to wwe and he was going to come back to wwe and then last thursday he had a heart attack and he passed away at 36 years old oh my gosh yeah that's way too young so So that was you know that was really sad and it was honestly there have been some other people who have passed away in wwe since we started baker banter this one has definitely hit the wrestling community the hardest but i've got to say derek i was very moved and very touched by how many of our followers reached out to us so quickly wanting to check on you and wanting to see how you were doing because they know how much you care about wrestling and wwe and how much it means to you and when they found out that somebody as as big as bray wyatt and also just with his age and, and how tragic his passing was there were a lot of people that were really worried about you and i thought i was just really touched by how many people cared enough to ask us how you were doing so how are you doing i'm really fine right now <laughs> it's been it's been a few days since it happened so yeah. you've had some time been, to process been for days of it i'm still still sad what happened but but and of the day bray wyatt do have an awesome career in 2013 all the way to 2014 like rivalries with with john cena daniel bryan and especially the shield and Randy Orton, right back, and also Seth Rollins as well. So many people had just amazing things to say about Bray Wyatt. And especially Alexa Bliss, too. Alexa Bliss had some really nice things to say about Bray Wyatt. I did watch the beginning of SmackDown with you Friday night, and they did a tribute. They did the, what was it called? The 10... Ten bell salute. They did the ten bell salute. I believe they were in Louisville on Friday, and there was many wrestlers there. Eric Rowan. Yes. So it's Eric Rowan and Braun Strowman did make an appearance. Make an appearance. Eric Rowan is the wrestler who yelled at Derek. 
<laughs> and said, oh, get out of the way, <laughs> kid. <laughs> Back in 2019. Yep. On so, his Monday Night Raw debut. On Derek's Monday Night Raw debut when Eric Rowan yelled at him and sat around sweat on him. You know what I'm going to do? What are you going to do? On SmackDown. What? When I have a microphone in my hand. Oh. I'm going to talk about bless her soul. <laughs> Mimi Baker, I'm going to bring her up on, on SmackDown. I don't think that that's That is happen. so crazy. I don't think WWE would like that. Mm-mm, mm-mm. I want... WWE, did they hear this? I think you should just say it here then, where you have a microphone. Yep. I think you're going to have a microphone here much quicker than you will on Friday Night SmackDown. I want WWE to hear this. Here, here I'm going to go to say about Mimi Becker. And I thought we were talking about Bray Wyatt. I'm so confused. We're still processing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I did watch the beginning of SmackDown with you, and it was pretty emotional. I'm not going to lie. I did shed a tear, which I was not expecting. But it was just seeing all of the wrestlers standing there and seeing how emotional they were and how tough it was for them. And just the tribute that they put together for him in honor of him was beautiful and it was it was it was tough for the wrestling community. It really was. It was a hard week, and a lot of people told us how hard it was for them and how hard they took it. And it's sad. And and we're praying for his family mm-hmm. and his friends. And I just hope that you know they'll continue to heal and and grieve and heal and and be able to remember all of the really really great things that it sounds like he was able to do while he was here yeah just hopefully that they can find peace in knowing that he lived a great life and he was beloved he was beloved and hopefully he's in a better place yeah yeah Yeah. so that yeah i i knew that this was going to be a hard conversation to have because it was just a really hard week for the wrestling community but I do want to move on to something happier and something kind of exciting that I'm not sure you know about yet. I did send you a text about it. It was in the group text with our family, but I don't think you ever responded. So I'm going to assume that you probably didn't pay attention to it. But so there's this this um, website called Sports Kita. Mm hmm. They talk about all sorts of sports, but they have a wrestling arm, Mm -hmm. Sports Kita Wrestling. We actually did meet one of their reporters when Derek and I and mom were in um, San Antonio for Royal Rumble earlier this year. Derek got interviewed by one of their reporters, Emily. But Mm -hmm. did you know that Sports Kita Wrestling wrote three articles? Three, count them, one, two, three where they quoted Dominic Mysterio and their source was the Baker's Bantering Podcast. Wow. That's so crazy. (laughs) Yeah. It literally said on their source, Baker's Bantering Podcast. And they were quoting Dom for what he talked about with us. That is so cool. Isn't that so cool? That is so cool. I listened to that one today. Did you? Mm-hmm. What'd you think? I really love his relationship with you guys. Isn't he the best? Mm-hmm. He's the best. He is the best. I was so sad not to be on that podcast. Oh my gosh. He's just, I can't even say enough nice things about how awesome I think he is. And he's just so like sweet and nice. I just like love him so much. And he I never- started laughing. I was in Michael's earlier today and I started laughing so hard when you asked him about his hair. <laughs> well, Chris, did Chris say. had his doubts. Chris was like, "That ain't real." I was and there for that conversation. I'm pretty sure. And I was like, "That shit's real." Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at him. I'm right here, up in person. So I want to tell you the three articles that they wrote on Sports Kita. They Good wrote God, one dude. about Dominic talking about Jay joining the Judgment Day. That was mm-hmm. one of the things that they talked about. And they quoted Baker Banter on. They also wrote an article about Dominic Mysterio talking about his fiance Marie. And then they also wrote an article about Dominic commenting on the bloodline and the state of the bloodline and how their family is falling apart. But the Judgment Day is still a family that's very much united and that sort of thing. So those are the three different articles that they wrote about that they directly quoted what Dominic said from our podcast. That's crazy. 
That's awesome. I told you WWE is watching. <laughs> well, they're not <laughs> WWE. They are sports key to wrestling, but they are watching. But pe- people are watching. That's for sure. But but not Michael Cole or um, Kevin Adam Patrick Pierce. and appears. Yeah, not Cor- none of them Cor- are watching yet. Okay, so we're to wrap this up. I know that by the time this episode comes out, payback will be over. But there are a couple of matches that have been confirmed that you yes. did predict that I would like to go ahead and acknowledge that they have been confirmed. So we have the first one is L.A. Night. Yeah. Yeah. Although I am cheering for the Miss. Versus the Miss. Go Miss. We'll see about that. I'm just oh, saying. Awesome. Beef. But, but I'm going with Will L.A. Night. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. And Megan's clueless. The other I one. so left out. <laughs> That's okay, Megan. That's okay. <laughs> hey, Megs. Give me the, the best. Yeah. 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 Let's do it again. Yeah. L- hold on. Hold on. Oh, wait. Okay. Wait. I'm ready. L.A. Night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, oh, Ellis didn't like that. He said. Oh, sorry, Ellis. Sorry, <laughs> Ellis. His ears just got blown out. My bad. Okay, and what was d- the... Those, don't be the big baby over there. <laughs> oh, Derek. We probably did pretty much scream in his ear. We were all speaking pretty pretty clear. And, and all three of us. All four of us at the same time. Yeah. All four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. So last <laughs> thing. There's one more match that has been confirmed for payback that you wanted to talk about, yep. which is... Rey Mysterio versus Austin Phoenix for the United States Championship. No so it's way. A rematch. Right? Rematch. So what happened with the first one? What happened with the first one was Ray got injured. No, Austin got injured. Yeah. His Austin hurt his out. back and Ray won and got the belt. Okay. When did Ray didn't Ray recently get injured too? Who was he fighting then? That was um, That was Santos Escobar. Yeah, that and that wasn't a championship match. Okay. No. But Ray currently has the United States Championship belt. Yep. And they are doing a rematch, Ray versus Austin Theory at Payback. And you are choosing who to win. You know what? I do love Ray Mysterio. Dang no it, Derek. Way, There's no. only one right Should answer to this. Not. This is crazy. I hate when he Should I thought not. it was going to be Ray. How are you going <laughs> to choose Austin, bro? I'm shook. I do love Ray Mysterio. I, I, but, I do. But. I do. But what's the but? We know it's coming. But I do love Austin Theory too. They're, they're both great friends. This is crazy. I have to do bro. it right now. Austin Theory is not your friend. Austin Theory literally. She, he's the one that's in the meshes. He said to me, Derek, and I quote, Derek, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Bro, he made you Watch a cameo. Why would you mean to win your United States Championship? He didn't say any of this. This is not true. Merry Christmas. He did say Merry Christmas. During the video. That was a special moment for me. That was a special moment for you. But the only reason that video even exists is because of our friend Dominic Mysterio. And you were just. Dominic made that happen. So I. Bro, bro, just last week, you were cheering for Lyra, what's her face, and whoever her partner was instead of Dom and Rio, which was bullshit total bullshit and now you're seriously gonna say like i understand you not choosing dom because dom is a bad guy and like sometimes you have a hard time cheering for the bad guy whatever ray is our king ray is our hero he is our our good guy who loves us so much please i i am jenna's a big ray fan oh my god i just can't even believe this i hate when he does this he's always so disappointing when who's gonna win just tell us so this can both. That's what you're trying to say before you freaking know. If you're going to pick up Austin over Ray Mysterio, that's I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Well, so you want both to win? That's not going to happen. Ray you Mysterio is going to retain his title. No. Say it. I'm not doing say that. Say it. I'm picking both. That's okay? bullshit. You can't pick both. You got to pick Derek. one. You got to pick one. I'm not going to pick one. I'm picking both. That's crazy. I'm picking okay, both. Okay, well then both me and Jenna are your favorite sisters, but you you don't do it that way all the time. So what is up with that? I'm number one. <laughs> Megan's his favorite you are. sister. <laughs> you are, Megan, because these two are crazy. Are crazy mm-hmm. right now. 
they crazy. are crazy. This week's I'm gonna choose Rey Mysterio over Austin Theory. That's There's an impossible so choice. That's n- it's so not an impossible it's choice. It's, it's Rey the Mysterio choice. every it's the choice. every day. It's not the <laughs> choice. I pick both. This is the time that I get to punch Derek back in the face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. We're going to have to end it there, but I am just, I can't wow. believe it. I'm disappointed in you, Derek. I am just, this is. Unbelievable. This feels Listen so unsatisfactory. To me. <laughs> Listen to me. We're going to pick both. Okay. First, I do want Rey Mysterio to retain. Yes. My money is on Rey Mysterio. Okay. Out of doubt. Okay. But my, my prediction is also fair. He does this. He likes to do this where he puts his money on one, but he picks the other. It's like a safety blanket. I eat both. But I feel like I both. <laughs> your money would be on Austin because I feel like. And you ain't got no money. More what odds money? are that they'll ha- choose him to win. You know what I mean? You're not putting money on anything. My for prediction real. is Austin Fury to become a steel United States champion. He's not actually I betting anything. Still, <laughs> still, still love both men. Okay, so Austin you think. Fury, Katie, sorry, 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 sorry. It's Mark's money. It's Mark's money. That's Austin where Fury, the imaginary comes Ray from. Ray Mysterio, mm-hmm. out of doubt. You guys are, 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 are incredible. Ray, b- let me talk to you. Ray Mysterio, you are the, the greatest friend ever have. You're the, 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 the greatest personality. You are the former United States champion. He right is now, the United States champion. Right now, you're the current. You're former United States champion before. You beat my man, Austin Fury. And that's okay. That's okay. Because I, I wasn't, wasn't ready to this, this, see you win that, that title. Wasn't ready for that. But, Ray, you are an incredible person. You are cr- cr- I'm still loyal to you. You're awesome. Jane and Katie loves you so much. And Megan. Wait, this is over. <laughs> Megan, you are my favorite. Wrap it up. Ray Mysterio, good luck at Payback. Austin Fury, you know me. I, I am loyal to Ray. I do love him. But you, sir, when you used to mean that man she is before during Christmas time. Super stoked. Awesome. I was super stoked about that. It was awesome. I did help you doing the United States Championship as your very serious war games in Boston. So I just want to c- 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 continue the path for now. And we'll see what happens to Payback. Ray, my money is on you. Like always, you always win. Austin, you're my my prediction. You win back your your championship. We'll see what happens at payback. Austin Fury, it down down. And Ray Mysterio, we love you. Vasa. All right. Well, that. thank you for wa- listening to a, another episode of Baker's Bantering. If Hang you're on. still here, we There's are st- one more thing. Derek, we are done. I have to go to bed. Thank you guys so much. If you're still here, we appreciate you listening. This was a very chaotic episode, but we did have fun and we hope you had fun too. You can find us on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube at Baker Banter. My name is Jenna. You can find me Jenna uh, with two A's underscore B E E on TikTok, Instagram, and Snapchat. Katie. My name is Katie. You can find me on Instagram at K A T Y Y underscore B E E. And that's the same handle on TikTok as well. The Snapchat is Katie Baker 29 K A T Y B I K E R 29 Megan, thank you so much for joining thank us. You Would you like me to guys? plug your Instagram? No. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining us, Megan. We Thanks had for so having me. This much was so fun. fun. I can't I'm wait to come back here. again. Yes. We do have producer Ellis here. He is Ellis Hella Cool on Instagram, <laughs> TikTok, all the things. <laughs> he is the best. Thank you for bearing through this episode it was quite chaotic but we had fun and we hope you enjoyed and we will talk to you guys later see you next week peace peace